Right, I'm in Singapore. I'm attending a large conference. And you know the saying, work hard, play harder. So I'm taking full advantage of this fantastic opportunity and seeing some of the great sights. Of course no trip will be complete without a visit to a canal, so I've used one of my lunch breaks to jump on the train and come here. This is the Alexandra Canal. The canal is a natural tributary of the Singapore River, which has seen many changes throughout its history, but today it's a 1.2 km canal flowing from Tanglin Road towards downtown Singapore and into the Singapore River. I can't find much online about the history of the canal, but I know that before the British arrived on Singapore, it was known as Bo Be Kang, which translates to No Tail River. By 1920, the canal had been straightened to follow its current path. The exact source of the river is unclear, and over the years, much of the canal has been covered up. The canal was often subject to flooding. Because it ran directly into the sea, Residents would report seeing venomous snakes beside the shanty towns that once lined its banks. I didn't see any snakes on my visit, but I did see some interesting wildlife. The highlight of which had to be a monitor lizard. Today, the area is surrounded by upmarket apartment blocks with many construction projects underway. Between 1997 and 2008, the canal was rebuilt and there are no more floods. Singapore is a country that prides itself on cleanliness, with fines and even prison sentences for littering, something I wouldn't be against seeing in the UK. Like some canals in the UK, Alexandra Canal used to be filthy and even today, this is the first time during my stay that I've seen litter. The canal and river have undergone a massive clean-up. The Singapore River was the trade hub of the island nation, which resulted in a lot of pollution. In 1977, the government began a $300 million clean-up project, which included relocating thousands of squatters and street vendors, or hawkers, from beside the river. This resulted in the birth of one of Singapore's most popular attractions, the hawker centres outdoor food courts where you can buy a cheap tasty meal. In 2008, the Active Beautiful Clean project was launched, which will see all of Singapore's hidden waterways restored. This project led to the opening of Alexandra Canal Linear Park in 2011. There are many play areas including water play, as well as places to relax and enjoy a picnic while surrounded by nature. The canal reminds me a lot of the waterways around the London Olympic Park. And like the Olympic Park in London, the planting along Alexandra Canal is functional as well as beautiful. Singapore is not a country rich in natural resources. Most of its produce is imported by sea, and the country does not produce enough water for its 6 million residents. It's continually trying to find ways to reduce its dependence on neighbouring Malaysia for water. Canal water, as well as collected rainwater, are pumped through these plants, which filter the water before it's passed back into the canal, which flows to the nearby marina reservoir. In 2010, Marina Bay was converted from seawater into a freshwater bay. If you're lucky, you can witness this family of otters hunting in the bay.
canal is beautiful. It's dead quiet. I'd love to take a boat down here. Oh god, it's so hot. I didn't have a drink all day. I don't get any sense of history or um, of this as a working waterway. As canal turns to river, there's not much to immediately distinguish the two. Singapore is a country that has seen rapid change since its independence in the 1960s. Once these would have been bustling waters, but today the traffic is predominantly tourist boats. It really is the best way to see the many sights along the river, like the Helix Bridge and the Singapore Flyer, which when it opened was the highest observation wheel in the world. Or how about the world's largest floating stage, with seating capacity of 30,000? You can come here to see the Singapore Grand Prix, which unfortunately I missed by a couple of weeks. This unusual looking building, nicknamed the Durians, after the mediocre tasting fruit, is a theatre. We were very lucky that the week that we were there, there was a free dance festival taking place. Here's a statue of Thomas Raffles. It's very touristy, but a Singapore sling is a must-do, and the non-alcoholic version was amazing. This is the Parliament building, and here you have the old police headquarters. Today, Clark Key is best known for its bars and restaurants, but back in the colonial days, this place would have been bustling with bum boats and traders. It's good to see that some traditional architecture still survives. This colonial hotel is the Fullerton. It used to be the post office building. And here we get a glimpse of Singapore's most famous resident, the Merlion. Half lion, half mermaid. The name Singapore means Lion City. And this is possibly Singapore's most iconic building. This is the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. No video or photo that I've seen does justice to just how impressive this building is. Imagine a cruise liner on top of the three towers of this hotel. On its 57th floor it boasts an observation deck and infinity pool, giving amazing views across the city. On a clear day you can see as far as Malaysia and Indonesia. Of an evening there is a mediocre laser and water show. Singapore is an amazing city. Not unlike London, except quieter, much cleaner, and the transport is so so cheap. If you're visiting, then a boat trip is an absolute must. And if you're lucky enough to have a longer stay, why not check out one of the canals? The only thing that would make it perfect would be a few narrow boats. Thank you so much for watching. I'm off to have a chat with this lovely turtle over a well-earned glass of cold calamansi juice. See you all again very, very soon. Bye!